This week's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hello, hello everybody. Hope you're all doing great. Right then. Uh, the weather today is pretty miserable. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm struggling a little bit. I just uh, attended a, a conference in Pincher Creek, which is uh, a little uh, town in uh, southern Alberta. Uh, it was a great event. It was uh, the name of the event is Light Chasers. It was quite small, but uh, really great lineup of speakers, and I was really quite honoured to be the uh, the keynote speaker. And I, I'm hopeful that uh, Shane, the organizer of uh, Light Chasers, will uh, be doing some more events in the future because it's a, a great venue for Canadian photographers. It's not very often that we have these conferences where we have a number of uh, Canadian talent talking. Uh, so th the great thing about this conference is that uh, Pincher Creek is uh, very close to Waterton National Park, which is right on the border of the United States and it borders or backs up to uh, Glacier National Park. So the two are connected. And I have been to Waterton, but a very, very long time ago, and I haven't actually explored it very much. So uh, come out today to try and uh, spend a little bit of time out in the area exploring and, and seeing what we can find. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping to spend three days here because today it's just absolutely miserable and we're just kind of driving around and seeing what there is to photograph. Now we've come across these, uh, these forests here that were burnt out I think in 2017 but I could be wrong there. It was, it was quite recent and uh, it's a real shame that they were burnt but they do make great subjects for photography. Uh, it was, I guess it was several years ago I, uh, I did a video, I'll leave a link up in the corner here, where I was photographing these burnt trees with uh, snow on the ground and in flat lighting conditions they look kind of neat, they almost look like uh, pen drawings or ink pen drawings. Now unfortunately there, there isn't that much snow here but there are patches of snow in the mountains here so what I've decided to do is just look for patterns where we have these lines of trees and then perhaps a pattern of snow in the background. And uh, something else that I'm really quite interested in is just all out pattern shots. So behind me here we have out these burnt out forests but they really make for great subjects when you just do uh, like a, just an all out pattern. Now not everybody's cup of tea, they kind of look like uh, wallpaper shots but uh, I, I really like them. Now and then you can find a, uh, something that to kind of break up the pattern, like a tree that's a little different shape or perhaps a different color or something. But in this case, I'm just going for all out pattern right across the frame. Uh, the 65 by 24 format, I, I really enjoy using. So uh, that's what I'm doing. And, it, and, and what's really interesting is that if you look at the trees this way, they're quite white and gray. But then if you look at the trees this way they have a lot of yellow in them and black so I'm taking some shots this way and this way uh, the hardest part right now is just dealing with the rain it, we keep getting these squalls come through so I have to run back to my van and and shelter for a bit and then run out again and take some more images This is uh, my kind of photography 
right next to the car. <laughs> uh, it's funny, if you look around enough, you can kind of find the odd tree that might be leaning over or is slightly different. So that adds a bit more interest than just a, a pattern. Uh, you probably can't see it with this camera, but uh, looking this way towards the, the trees that have the orange side, there's a, a, a burnt branch that's lying diagonally on the fringe of the forest here. So what I've decided to do is uh, use that as kind of my center of interest and then just have the pattern of the trees behind. With images like this uh, I tend to reach for the longer focal lengths. So with the GFX 100S I've decided to use the 1 to 200 but I also have the uh, 1.4 teleconverter on and I'm pretty much racked out right at 200 and what that will do is the angle of view will give the illusion that the scene is, is compressed. You can stand back further. So the, the problem is if I, if I move forward with a wide angle lens, because the angle of view is so much wider, you're going to include so much more and there'll be uh, the illusion that there's quite a bit more space in between in the trees. I want them to all feel kind of compressed and, and against one another so that they just form more of a pattern than individual trees, if that makes sense. Uh, and the same with these scenes up here. Like, if I look at it overall, the mountain scenes, I mean, the mountains are beautiful, but right now with this type of light, they probably wouldn't make great photographs. So what I've decided to do is just zoom in on these snow patterns and then you have these burnt trees kind of surrounding them so it's more of a, a pattern uh, it doesn't really matter what the subject is it's it's just more of the the, uh, the photograph is all about the pattern um, I'm also here with my friend Wayne I'm not sure where he's gone I think he's gone down there somewhere the temptation is to slap on a wide angle lens uh, and I might do that for some of these shots, but I just love that, uh, the angle of view with a, with a longer lens. So you can really zoom in on, on patterns or, or individual trees within the frame.
well the, the weather has been a little bit hit and miss today so we've we went out kind of late this morning and did a bit of photography uh, the uh, the trees and such and then it kind of got gloomy and uh, this is late afternoon or evening and it's slowly clearing up a little bit uh, so we, we decided to go to a waterfall and now for the life of me I can't remember but I'll leave the name down below here and it was okay but there's a lot of uh, public structures to view the waterfall that kind of get in the way uh, so that kind of ruined <laughs> that scene but we we're kind of heading back to the car now and we've come across uh, some uh, plants here now for the life of me I don't know the name of them if I find out the name again I'll leave the name of them down below but they have a really great contrast of the yellows with the uh, the burnt black uh, logs that are lying on the ground here and just like the old growth forest photography for me it's a matter of trying to find trees that are somewhat separated from one another and I found a composition pretty quick here because in this foreground area it's not terribly busy because of the fire there's no branches sticking up or anything like that so it's quite easy to find a photograph and what I like about this is the logs forming these angles on the ground here mixed in with the yellow plants uh, the background is a little bit busy but I could probably just darken that off a little bit or perhaps crop it uh, the, the one thing that I'm not terribly sure about is the use of a polarizer here I was telling Wayne that there's a really great sheen on these uh, these burnt logs here and I really like that it gives the the scene quite a bit of depth as soon as you put a polarizer on it gets rid of that but by doing that you saturate the green so there are some benefits to it so I'm going to take some with and then some without
once again, I'd like to thank Squarespace for supporting my channel and sponsoring this week's video. One of my favorite features of a Squarespace website is the ability to quickly and efficiently update a gallery or page either from a desktop computer or while on the fly using the Squarespace app from my mobile device. Loading multiple images onto a page is quick and offers the ability to change a design or page quickly and elegantly without any coding knowledge. Want to sell your products? No problem. Setting up shop is also quick and intuitive. Sound interesting? Why not head over to squarespace.com and try it for free? And if you like what you find, use the code Adam Gibbs for 10% off your first purchase. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Nice sunny day in Waterton National Park. It's uh, funny because yesterday was so miserable and then today uh, is, is absolutely beautiful, but uh, it's actually too sunny for photography. Uh, earlier it was, it's starting to cloud over a little bit now. So things are starting to, uh, the light's a bit more subdued. Uh, we've come back to an area that we, Took some images of yesterday there's these wonderful layers of burnt trees and then grassy hillsides and then we've got the mountains but because all of all the trees burnt uh, it creates these really great layers and of course since they are burnt and there's no leaves or or needles you can see the uh, the hillsides beyond and you know since the fire things are starting to green up uh, at the bottom of the trees so there's some really great different layers and shades of various colors um, right now I'm really interested in these I think they're aspen uh, but as you can see they're quite thick in the middle here which is a bit of a problem because they're uh, it's very busy especially when the Sun comes out like this but as they come kind of towards us here they start to spread out a little bit and you can with a long lens kind of pinpoint uh, sections of the trees or some of the broken trees and, and so on with these uh, shrubs that are, are wonderfully backlit right now so what I'm concentrating on right now I've found a couple of trees that have kind of broken off midway up the tree but they they kind of mimic each other there's two of them in the foreground and then I've tried to space out the remainder of the trees so they're not overlapping with one another and then eventually the layers get thicker and thicker. So I found a, a composition that I really like. It took me quite a, f a while to find it. Um, because these aspens, uh, they have quite uniform patterns down low, but the top gets quite busy. So I've been trying to find something where I can separate all of these, uh, these uh, trunks of these trees with that beautiful backlit shrub at the bottom. It's been a bit tricky, uh, but I think by using a pano uh, type uh, format, it, it really helps and eliminates a lot of that clutter. Uh, so I'm using a 65 by 24 format. Uh, and this is one of those cases where I really wish that I had a slightly longer lens. Um, so right now I'm using the 1 to 200 with a 1.4 teleconverter and I've got it racked right out and it's still not quite long enough. But of course, as soon as you start using a longer lens and you run into problems with uh, depth of field, 
and uh, you know in some cases you might have to uh, do a little bit of focus stacking because it doesn't matter how far you stop down it's very difficult to get everything in sharp focus uh, unless you're you know quite a ways from your subject Right, I, uh, I was really hoping to photograph some other subjects today. There's quite a few wildflowers, but I just seem to be stuck on these uh, dead trees. And these specimens here are, are just fascinating because they're quite a bit larger than the other ones that we've been photographing today. I was hoping to get some, uh, some cleaner uh, compositions. Now, I am having one heck of a time finding a composition, but I think I might have found something. Part of the problem is finding a, a, a clean background. And this background is not bad. It's actually the snow that's a little bit distracting for my eye. But uh, I've, I think I've managed to kind of incorporate it into somewhat of a cohesive composition. Uh, so these, white trees down here really interest me and there's a few branches that are kind of crossing so I, I think it might work the bottom is a little bit busy but the background is certainly nice and clean uh, the the clouds have moved in so the light is quite subdued this is just a, a great area but I like I said I'm, I'm having a bit of a, a hard time it could be because it's just getting late in the day so I think this will be my last photograph for today uh, I hope you like the photograph. Um, well, first I've got to take the photograph, <laughs> then we'll see, see how it turns out. I can't leave here with at least attempting to take some photographs of these just beautiful balsam root. There's, uh, there's just fields of balsam root. This, they come in patches, but this is one of the best patches that I've found so far. Some of them, uh, some of the other patches I found today are look, were looking a bit kind of on their way out, but these still look nice and fresh. Uh, the light is really great on the flowers but the mountains themselves uh, the light is not great there's actually a little bit of directional light coming in so the the flowers are quite backlit so I'm gonna face the Sun and just try and fill the whole frame with flowers
once again, thank you ever so much for following along on this week's adventure. Be sure to give me the old thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And if you'd like to support my channel in other ways, be sure to head on over to my website where you'll find my new book, Antarctica. I also have a number of hats for sale. And also, don't forget my first book, Quiet Light. All right, folks, until next time, cheerio. Thank you.